got it, folks. Thanks for tuning in for another cruise of Smooth. Normally, when uh, I record these shows, I'm heading the other direction. I'm heading into work. Uh, I just... I woke up late today, and I wasn't feeling much like recording, so I waited until I was headed home. We're working rather long shifts right now, and so with it being near the summer solstice, uh, I'm driving into the sunrise, basically. Um, I tell you what, seeing the state of news on everything it's really disheartening. You know, uh, seen a thing where Quaker Oats is wanting to change their name. Uh, they're selling off the brand or getting rid of the brand Aunt Jemima. Uncle Ben's might become a thing of the past as well. And I actually read the alleged, I didn't verify it, but I read the alleged story behind the Aunt Jemima brand. And she was promoting the brand for Quaker. According to this story that I read, she actually lived a very successful life due to her position and her being the face of the company, or of the brand. So... You know, I'm just... How many things are we going to look at and just decide randomly that they're offensive or they're appropriation or whatever? Now, if you look back through... Okay, here's my entire take on it. If someone looked through a company's or a brand's history and found that it was legitimately racist or ill-founded or ripped someone off? Yeah, sure. Like, okay, case in point, I get Papa John's no longer being property of John Schnatter and that the board voted him out due to remarks that he made on a conference call. Okay, I get that. If the Aunt Jemima story is true, I'm struggling to understand why that's a terrible thing. So, I... It's just... There's a lot of reasons to be upset about a lot of things, but I think that there is just a, there's two problems. I think part of the problem is there is a mob that will get offended at anything, and the other part is, oh, goodness. Sorry, folks. An 18-wheeler broke down at a spot on the road where there's no emergency lane. They're doing construction. But I think that there's a lot of people that will just get offended at anything. 
and then there's also a bunch of corporations that know it and so a lot of them are trying to get out ahead of this you know um, there was a rather long list of celebrities that donated money to um, bail out the I will make the distinction rioters and looters in, in the aftermath of the George Floyd protests. The protests and the riots are two different things. It's there are a lot of people that are showing up that aren't, you know, damaging anything or uh, injuring anybody. There are a lot of people that are. They're not the same crowd in a lot of cases. But um, they donated money to bail them out of jail. If if it has happened, it's news to me. I don't think anyone has donated any money to help the businesses that were already struggling prior to the George Floyd riots. And there were plenty of them. There's actually... I may have already talked about this. In one of the major cities in my state, there's a business that, due to uh, coronavirus and the George Floyd riots, they're closing up permanently. And I'm not valuing a human life more than a building or an edifice or property damage. But how many lives is that going to impact? Uh, one of the local newspapers put out a list of all the businesses that are closing. They listed coronavirus as the, the reason for it, but I gotta wonder if you had businesses that were, you know, operating at a 5 to 10 percent profit margin after everything's all said and done. And then you shut them down for two months, a lot of them, that couldn't do online or that their business, their cash flow was drastically reduced, um, and their profit margins were reduced. If they couldn't uh, afford the damages after the riots and they just, they're bankrupt, you know, they're done. I'm sure that that's happened to a lot of businesses. And I'm totally against anything that Officer Chauvin or the other officers around him did. I do not know their names. Um, I think that I know that George Floyd was uh, unjustly killed, he did not have a trial. He was posing no immediate threat to the officers or those around him. There's conjecture that he could have been resisting arrest, but that doesn't warrant having a knee placed on your neck while you're laying face down on the asphalt. It just doesn't. So, there's a ton of other things. If George Floyd was legitimately resisting arrest while he was handcuffed, there's a ton of other things that cop could have done to control him. But all the cities where this rioting has happened, business owners are likely to either not reopen or try to get out. I know I would, because in a lot of these cities, you've got police departments that either could not or were not allowed to control rioting and looting, and they caused millions of dollars in damages all over. 
and that's going to cost a lot of people jobs, and I'm sure it's going to hurt town and city economies where this happens, where, where there was rioting and looting. I hate to say it. In my opinion, George Floyd's daughter is going to have a more difficult time than she finding a job than she would have had all the protests in Minneapolis been peaceful. My opinion, I have no way to prove it. I think that you're going to have a lot of small businesses which employ a lot of people. There's more small businesses than there are large corporations. Small businesses employ a ton of people. And even franchises and uh, stuff that's privately held. A uh, good friend of mine growing up, his parents owned McDonald's franchises. So... How many people is that going to hurt in these communities where that's happened? I don't know. But if you've got people that are looking at having to rebuild from scratch or where their cost of insurance is going to go up and they can't afford it, they're either going to have to close or move. I think that I truly hope that there's serious reforms about police violence in this country. I hope that they start screening officers. I hope that they start better training officers. But I look for there to be more problems than solutions due to what's happened. Could be wrong. I hope I am. I really do. But that's what I look to have happen. Also, people with the income to move out of those cities are probably looking. And then you're going to hobble that local economy even more because the people that have the ability to move are in the higher percentages of income earners. And they're going to take their month, their tax revenue with them. I think that another Detroit is not outside the realm of possibility where a city has to declare bankruptcy. My opinion. Anyway, that's kind of what I had on my mind. I'm sorry I haven't been posting as regularly as normal. I've just... It's our first week back to work. I've had everything on my mind and haven't felt much like talking. So, uh, y'all stay safe. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, try to be coming to you a little more regularly. Uh, oddly enough, even though we've been off for two and a half months total, we're getting ready to go on summer shutdown because of maintenance concerns.